Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this episode of Every Effect in After Effects Explained, we're going to be taking a look at the keying and the matte effects. So these two kind of go together, and they're all about kind of masking or keying out certain colors, luminances, lights, and refining those edges after you create those selections. So to begin, I've just got a couple sample clips. We're going to work through different examples. But the main effect inside of the keying folder is going to be this key light effect. This is like your standard key in After Effects. And what this does is it allows you to pick a color. So for example, I can pick green or I can even use the ink dropper tool to pick a color and I can pick out an exact color and key it out. So basically allowing for a transparency. And in that way, if I was to drag another clip underneath, then we kind of have this nice mask section where we keyed out what we wanted to key out and we can blend things together in that way or create selections in that way. So within the key light, we do have different options. Like we can see the final result or the source. This is the source. Or we can see like what is being corrected. So we can kind of see what's being selected just to get an idea of what's happening. So final result usually will give us a good idea. And you can also adjust the gain and the balance of the screen. So you can kind of make it weaker or stronger. You can add a bit of blur if you want to round off the edges. And you have all of these options to really get into detail on the black white levels if you really needed to perfect your mask. Now if you don't have key light that's where there's still a couple older effects that have been kind of superseded by key light but they're still there such as color difference key and these all kind of will work in the same similar way. You choose a color it takes the difference of that color and the original and gives you transparency but in this case we will want to adjust the gamma or the, like the contrast in the black and white, which can be kind of difficult to get a precise selection like you want when you have to adjust all these different sliders. But it is an option there. Likewise, there's also options like linear color key. Same thing, you just choose one color and it will linearly just kind of key out that color. But in this case, it's simple. You can adjust the tolerance, how close to that color or the softness, but you can see I'm having a harder time getting the kind of grayish background not to get washed out as well. Now there are tools that kind of help with stuff like that, such as Advanced Spill Suppressor. So this will allow us to kind of take out the colors that spill out throughout the image. You see there's a lot of noise and grain in this image. So if I change the method to Ultra, I can actually choose a color that I want to suppress the spill of. So in this case, there's like this reddish brown that is throughout the image. I can try to get take that out. And you can see it kind of successfully removes that tint of that reddish brown that's spilled throughout the image, even if I increase the tolerance. And in this way, it can help us get better contrast that we want so that we can key out the green and it's not muddied up with different colors so if I was to stack effects such as this and like a key light, I can have some different flexibility and, and control over what's getting keyed out and make sure other parts aren't getting keyed out. Some other tools we have here are for cleanup options such as key cleaner. So this can try to clean up some of the noise or grain in your image or you can adjust like the amount of edges while still trying to retain some sort of sharpness about it. So you can see in this case, it tries to get rid of some of that noise, but just more options for you to clean up and adjust your keys and masks. And one kind of manual specific one is the CC wire removal. This will allow us to directly try to clean up a line between two points. So you see these two points that have appeared, point A and point B. Let's say I wanted to kind of clean up this line where the film sprocket is. I can move point A and point B over there and then I can increase like the thickness or the amount of this and I have some manual control over if I for some reason wanted a more straight clean line here. You can remove from point to point and get like a wire removal tool. Now going along with mask cleanup, we also have the matte section. So the matte section deals with any time you have any kind of selection or cutout. It helps us 
either fill in or clean up some parts of that. So if I use the matte choker on this, you'll see that it allows me to really get rid of some of that fuzziness and grain and choke it, for lack of a better word, kind of contain or expand it out in a certain direction. So this can be helpful, for example, when there's lots of little tiny holes or dots where you rather them be filled in. Adjusting some of these settings can kind of smooth over and fill in all those little holes. And it also allows you to adjust like the levels of softness or fuzziness. So you see in this case, it took out all that noise and grain that was in the middle fuzzy and really choked it all down to the edges. You also have simple choker. This has a lot less options, just basically choke or don't choke. And then you also have refined, soft or hard matte. If you're familiar with any time that you use the roto brush tool, for example, to create a selection of a person or object, which I have tutorials of, you'll see you always have the refine edge tool where you can adjust the feather, contrast edge and all that. But you can also use tools in the matte section, such as refine, to do similar type of things, feather, contrast, smoothness, and really refine those edges, especially for something like hair. With these tools, you have the option to kind of refine it so it's not so cut out and it's a little bit more organic looking. So that might be an example of a soft mat, and this might be an example of a hard mat, where it's like a lot more hard edges that we're refining. Now there's still a couple other cool keying tools in here that can do different things, such as color range. This one allows us to select a range of colors. So one cool thing is I can just use the ink dropper tool. Let's say I want to select out all of these shades of like gray and white from the stairs. I can collectively select all those ranges of colors and you see in the color range window what's getting masked out. So the black parts are getting masked out and the white parts are showing. So in a cool way, we can mask out not only the grays, but you know, also let's say the greens out of this image and slowly just take out whatever ranges of colors that we don't want. You can also fine tune your selections with the sliders here. So you have the fuzziness and then the different type of color spaces where you can adjust the individual color spaces themselves to fill in or take out some colors. So this can be another differently intuitive way to select out colors. And another one, let's say you're working with something where you're just trying to extract out something, such as this PNG we have. Let's say we have a graphic of a logo or something, and we're just trying to select it out, but it's not a clear and easy selection since there's some softness and glow to it. One thing we can use is the extract tool. If I put that on this layer, You'll see that this allows us to work by a histogram and adjusting out from black to white points. So if I slowly lower the white point, you'll see it'll only show everything from certain ranges of the histogram. So if I bring that in, maybe increase the softness a little bit, I can get this perfectly extracted selection even though it was a PNG with a white background. So this could come in handy a lot of times when you're extracting things from white or black backgrounds, but you also have tools to extract out just individual color channels. Let's say I didn't want the glow, but I just wanted that flower. I can extract out from the red color channel, for example. So it can be cool to separate different things going on in an image or logo. Now, another one that's kind of been superseded by key light is the inner outer key. So this one is not exactly obvious at first how it works. If you drag it onto the clip, it will allow you to choose foreground and background mask layers. So firstly, let's make a background a mask. So I will choose this section here as the background. And then I'll also make a mask around his shoe. So let me just set this mask to none. I'll also create another mask more closely following his shoe. Making sure to set the mask to none. We can give After Effects information now, such as the foreground is mask two, and that even might be all it needs. And then you can adjust things like the edge thinning and the cleanup amount. 
and it will try to kind of circulate or triangulate into your object and clean it up a decent bit. That might not be my first choice for selecting out a certain object, especially with some of the other tools available here. And really, if you're trying to mask out an image, I might go with the Roto Brush tool, but it's there. Lastly, a cool one that we have is the difference mat on. So this one actually does provide a kind of unique way to key out certain things. And that's based on kind of subtracting your image from a reference frame. So let's say I have an image where stuff is moving across, but everything else is relatively staying still. And this isn't even the best example because there's a bit of shakiness. I even applied a warp stabilizer on it to try to get it still. But if we get to a point of the clip, like a reference frame, such as this, where we have this plain background, there's nothing in the foreground of the shot, this can be our reference. So the way that you can save out a single frame is by going to composition, save frame as file. And you can save this wherever you want, but it'll pop up in your render queue and you can choose to output it wherever you want in whatever setting you want, such as Photoshop document or something else. And you'll click render and it'll show up on wherever you saved it. In my case, that was the desktop. So I just dragged it back on here. And so now it's in here. This is the layer that I have, but I'm just going to hide this layer. So we still have our video clip underneath. But since we have that layer now that reference, if we add the difference mat onto this clip, we can choose what clip we want to be the difference layers. So in this case, that Photoshop document that I just created, and now every single frame that goes by, it's going to subtract it from that reference frame. And so we're only going to get the difference. Let me turn off that other layer so you can see. So every single frame it's taking and subtracting this and only showing us what is different about that. So it can be a cool way to get a selection of multiple objects moving through your frame at once. And the more perfectly steady your video to the reference clip is, the better it'll be. In this case, it's kind of hard. We're working with grainy gravel and it's all gray and the pigeons are gray as well. But you can see it still does a decent job and you can even adjust the tolerance. So you can make it more or less tolerant. You can adjust the softness and feather of it and the blur. So you can use that and maybe going back to the matte effects, we can even try to use the matte chokers. This is a difficult clip. You see, we're still having some issues because the gray of this pigeon is still so close to the gray of that reference frame that After Effects is having trouble. But you can start to get an idea and with these tools, start to approach problems like this and be able to problem solve better on masking things out, cutting things out and refining your masks as well. In the next video of this series, we're going to be going over the noise and grain folder and what's available in there. So if you're new to my channel, definitely subscribe to stay tuned for new videos. I'm going over every single effect in After Effects in this playlist. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you over in the next one.